welcome everyone to the session from ashay and shrini vasan they are here with us to talk about speed matters client side performance improvement tips and tricks without further delay uh, over to you both thank you manjunath uh, so hello everyone i'll quickly start sharing the screen okay so we're going to talk about the uh, speed matters the client side performance improvements and we're going to also share some tips and tricks uh, more about caring the experiences of your users on your website on your web presence right before we talk about it quick introduction i'm ashay i'm a lead consultant with thoughtworks uh, uh, front end back end uh, devops these are some of the areas i work on uh, these days and you can see my twitter and uh, github handle and over to my pair shrini hi everyone myself uh, srinivasan shekar i am also a lead consultant and thoughtworks and uh, i'm a conference speaker and contributor to various open source uh, repositories maintainer of appium blogger and before uh, coming here i've also optimized my portfolio website uh, so you could see the link out there and uh, feel free to share your feedback on the same uh, in terms of performance or any and i, I am available on this twitter and uh, github handles so uh, we are here to talk about speed matters uh, performance client side performance improvement tips and tricks and agenda for today is going to be uh, why does performance matters right and what all different types of performance metrics we have and we are going to highlight some of the important ones and uh, and then we are going to start uh, live coding uh, basically we are going to show uh, a lot of tips and tricks in live and uh, please be patient with us and keep your questions coming and uh, uh, we have a q and a tab on the bottom so we keep, feel free to ask your questions and we will try to answer as early as possible and also at the end but still keep your questions coming and uh, we, we are looking forward to learn from you as well so uh, uh, to start with why does performance really matters right so uh, and nowadays consumers are more demanding than ever before and they rate you against the services they consume daily right performance is kind of a foundational for uh, for a wonderful user experience when site begins to load consumers basically wait for the content to load consumers are forced to wait basically on the low network than on the fast network right a performance kind of plays a crucial role in customer retention against your competitors there are wonderful uh, insights about certain organizations on optimizing their performance for example pinterest used to be uh, slower and they optimized uh, by looking at certain performance metrics they optimized their website and they started seeing once they optimized and they say 40% uh, more in terms of fast i mean probably they uh, measure and then they uh, see the scores between difference and they say 40% more the fastness and they introduced and they they experienced more signups in terms of 15 percentage more signups so the sooner you load and there is going to be a lot of conversion for you revenue for you and a better customer experience and also a lot of goodwill for your website right and bbc on another end uh, experienced one second slowness and they measured that after fixing it, they measured that they XP, I mean, the one second slowness had lead them to 10 percentage of fewer users. Basically, their conversions were dropping because of that one second slowness, right? So every second matters when it comes to performance, when it comes to uh, retaining your customers and providing them better customer experience, right? So we are here to share our experience in terms of improving client side performance with some cool demos that we have and uh, uh, we and we are also giving to provide you some valuable tips and tricks and feel free to ask you i mean uh, ask questions if you have any on the q a tab and we will try to answer as early as possible right and uh, uh asher being a, a full stack developer in thoughtworks and we both working on different clients right what are two crucial metrics that uh, uh, you experienced probably uh, pulling your websites down two crucial metrics yeah i think uh, from from uh, when i when i am on the other side of the table when i am a user or a consumer of a website for me when i enter the address in the address bar i expect it to load instantly if it's showing me a wide screen if it is 
showing me partial stuff, I kind of uh, get uh, annoyed and I may try to look at something else because our lives are super fast these days, right? You don't want to wait for a website to load. So yeah, it, if it loads faster, I'll be happy as a consumer on my website. Uh, but the other thing I can think of is I have sometimes experience on my, especially on mobiles. Uh, so uh, when you open a particular website, it shows you something. I click on a button but it doesn't do anything for some couple of seconds and i get frustrated and confused is it my mobile which is slow and hanging or is it website which has some fault or whether i even my click got registered or not i'll probably frustratingly click it twice or thrice <laughs> something of that sort so these are a couple of things i can remember Shrini. well some of the cool metrics that we are going to see are about uh, uh related to what you were talking about which is about uh, at times i also experience whether it's my mobile or do i need to go for a, a sale which is running behind the scenes now in india and uh, purchase a new one or is it uh, the web app that i'm using is uh, driving me crazy right so some of the metrics that we are going to see crucial uh, is about uh, largest contentful pain that you were talking about, uh, how long does it take for it to see something out there uh, in the largest area that we have and uh, blo total blocking time and the layout shift that you were also talking about that and time to interact you. These are some of the crucial metrics. A uh, bit history behind this is basically Google kind of analyzed a lot of uh, uh, websites that uh, through their search engines and see how they rank themselves uh, based on uh, and quite uh, some time back they moved to mobile friendly ranking i mean mobile first ranking as well right so based on analyzing a lot of websites they come up with some wonderful metrics and they also have a wonderful way to score these and you, might, you all might have used uh, lighthouse uh, to see some of your website score and how they behave exactly right so uh, some of the crucial metrics that we are going to see out of a lot more is largest contentful pain, total blocking time, cumulative layout shift, and time to interact. Since actually we were talking about uh, a hero image, right? Probably you can take us through a bit more in depth on what you were experiencing. Sure, sure. I think, yeah. When I was saying that I don't want to see the white screen, right? For longer when I enter something on the address bar, uh, I want to see something text image image probably i'll prefer that's my preference right it looks lively it feels lively so when you show something on your website your website can be large out of that whatever you show on this first part of the screen on whatever is visible on the screen scroll part we don't care but whatever is visible in your viewport viewport is the word we use for that uh is called as your uh, uh the largest content pool uh pent for example if the image is taking largest part of the viewport it's the image which will be treated as the largest content pool uh, uh, pent or if it is a text a paragraph that would be treated as the largest content pool pent whenever you render that paragraph or an image you complete rendering it from the time you started loading the page that's the time it takes and that's the time it takes for largest content pool uh, pent on your website so yeah I, th I think that's a very simple definition uh, maybe we can also talk about the other terms we have seen um, yeah so let's look at this one so here on the 0 0.2 second i can see uh, the uh, uh, something started loading so this is my first content pool uh, pent when you see at least something and when I see my hero image, which is the largest section on my uh, landing page, that's the uh, largest content pool pen. So it has taken almost like 0 0.2 seconds uh, to load it. Cool. Cool. Uh, so next bit is about the time it takes. It's quite related to content pool, uh, the, the time it takes to do the content pool painting. Uh, like if it is slow, why it is slow, right? There, there must be something happening which slows down my uh, the, the slows down the process to show the image on my page, and the time it takes to show something uh, uh, by the time your computer is doing something else. That's why it is not showing you the image or the text on your screen. And the time it does something else which blocks your uh, uh, rendering is called as total blocking time (TBT). Right? It can be JavaScript which is running. Uh, it can also be the time it takes to download resources and evaluate JavaScript uh, process uh, style script, style sheets. So the time your browser spends on this task is called as total blocking time or TBT. Uh, a bit of a context, your browser will have a main thread called as UI thread or main thread, which takes care of rendering something on your screen. 
and it also has some uh, lower priority threads or slower threads where you can do some of the other work but if you are doing something on the main thread it if it is doing one task it cannot do other tasks and that slows down your rendering if you are doing something before that maybe shrini uh, you can also like just to uh, pay you back you asked me about my experiences is there anything you would like to share for the others yeah uh, i think the crucial metrics that i remember going through were about uh, uh, layout shifts right so um, it's hard to figure out where exactly uh, the button is at times right um and uh, for example here if you see uh, the layout shifts i don't want to place an order but unfortunately while play, pressing a button it unfortunately submitted the order and the order is complete and it could be due to various reasons you might have not given a proper weight so and so probably some ads popped up and layout shifts uh, uh, when the other contents started loading right it's one of a crucial metric and a user centric metric for measuring uh, the stability also it helps us to qualify i mean quantify how often users experience these kind of uh, unexpected layout shifts so one thing that comes to mind very crucial when i was building my portfolio website is uh, I, i mean it uh, which i have seen in other websites too is uh, for a flash of seconds you will see unstyled text and then probably a uh, uh, font gets loaded a little later right so that's another one like the layout shifts due to various reasons is very important that needs to be fixed to give a better user experience right and the next one is another interesting one which is quite relevant to what you have talked about which is about thread uh, the main thread that gets blocked due to some other long running task right and here it's quite relevant which is time taken for your website to become interactive sometimes we might see that every uh, all, almost all the contents get loaded but still it may not be interactive as you said rightly whether it's mobile or it's a website that it's is freezing right so yeah. uh, so time taken for interactive is another crucial metric which is basically helps us to measure a responsiveness of your website right it helps us to identify exactly where exactly in the page that looks like an interactive but it is actually not right it is the time between the first contentful paint and the long running tasks Uh, the orange ones a long running task in so it's the diff of these two between right so that's taking a huge time and uh, that's when your website gets interactive right so these are two crucial metrics that i would say that needs to be uh, uh, much better in terms of uh, score so that it gives you amazing user experience right so yeah. given these metrics in hand uh, uh, we have also built a website Uh, so to showcase some of the uh, tips and tricks that we have mm. and uh, it's going to be a live demo and we have uh, so many cool things running over to you ashay probably take us through the website how it looks like and what's the performance score at the moment yeah cool thank you shrini uh, so i'll uh, help everyone i think I, i'll explain the website and the source code for this website is uh, uh, we're, we're going to share the source code as well as uh, it is being hosted on the verser at the moment the free hosting service they provide uh, so we are looking at the hosted website and it's a typical website we created for this use case and we tried to made uh, we added a lot of problems here so that you see, see the lowest score on the lighthouse or from a performance perspective we have lower score and we try to improve it as we talk about in the session typical website uh, the hero image header and then we are loading some of the top contributors from the react js website their names ids and then also their images along with that we have added some high quality images i usually go on a walk with my dog and uh, morning i take some photos while on the way so those are some of the high quality photos but they are added as a thumbnail image here we want to talk about certain image aspects and the use case we wanted to create for that we also added the twitter widget here and you, as you can see uh, our session is being tweeted and uh, we already started talking about it right so we are also loading a third party library uh, which is a, a twitter widget so that's about our website Uh, just before this session i ran a page speed insight uh, uh, on this uh, website and um, on the mobile it is uh, uh, scored quite late it's just 18 scored and we kind of failed in the uh, uh, speed uh, speed insight uh, test right and it is also telling us what is wrong we, maybe we can talk about it in details as we cover those topics but yeah it is telling us what can be improved if some of you have already used uh, uh, lighthouse the report is similar Uh, but it just that we are looking at uh, someone which is something which is a hosted service instead of running it on our local machine 
cool so if we are good here maybe yeah, i can get started with the first topic yeah since you started about hero image right let's start from there so uh, yes. consider we have a image which is quite huge as like how we have in our website how do we optimize that hero image so that i wanted to load and i don't see any blank screen i wanted to load it as early as possible right right i think there are certain so maybe a quick uh, pick into what is the hero image so this car image is the hero image on my website and as we're talking about the largest content pool paint uh, when i load my uh, page this is the image i see on my page and this should be the largest content pool paint uh, uh, major on my website cool uh, so maybe uh, maybe we'll talk about what can you do okay so we're going to cover something called as progressive images um, so Instead of loading a high quality images uh, bit by bit, we are trying to load it in a low quality and improve it as the time progress. Uh, we can also use modern extensions, which are lightweight and uh, higher in the, it, they can produce similar amount of quality of the JPEG, but then uh, if you use WebP, WebP is the name of that extension, for example, it gives you similar quality of JPEG, but it's almost uh, like, uh, at least I have, in my experience, I have seen it's like quite, a, by a quite large margin, it is smaller than JPEG. We can also preload some of the images. If you know the hero image is the one you need to load on your website, you can preload that image. So that browser uh, knows that I need to prioritize downloading this image. We can also do lazy loading of the images which are not required, which are not there on the viewport. We can also do asynchronous loading so that uh, those can be loaded or decoded on the worker thread instead of being loaded or uh, decoded on the main thread so that we free up more resources for other tasks. And we'll talk about also the fetch priority. Cool. Um, so I think these are the topics we wanted to talk and let's see how we can implement them in reality, right? So if you look at this particular website, uh, for, the, for the demo purpose, we are gonna use the local uh, one so that we can quickly make changes and see them in action. So if I go to network tab for that matter, and I say, I want to see the fast 3G network and I disable the caching so that we can uh, see the things getting downloaded each time and I reload this web page, what happens? I have that white page, then there was a flash and now my image is loading one by one, slowly it is loading, right? So uh, the image is hosted on uh, uh, a CDN, an image CDN, I'm using Contentful, which is the headless uh, uh, content manager. We are using the free account again here, and uh, they also support, they also have the image CD and the content delivery network for the image. And we'll explore some of the interesting things over there, right? So now if you see, if I am on this fast 3G, it is still showing you that the image is loading like uh, in a section, it goes like a dot matrix printer from top to bottom. This CDN and also other CDNs do it. Uh, it supports progressive loading. So if I say FL equal to, progressive let's see how the image is oops my mistake okay uh, i missed something over here so i'm gonna say fl equal to pro progressive yeah so the image was still loaded slow but it was a bit faster than the previous one and then if you see it is initially low quality I'm going to load it once again. It is low quality and then it is getting clarified as the time progresses. What happens? You are able to show the image immediately on your web page instead of waiting for it and slowly loading it. Okay, with me so far, I believe. At the same time, you can do something like if you know uh, that you don't really care about the clarity of this image, you can also do something like I want only 50% clarity. If you do that, the image is going to be super fast. Sorry, we are going to look at the all section here so that we can see the uh, size. So now it is 181 KB. When I was not really talking about the quality, the image was 458 KBs. So based on where you are showing, you don't want, you may not need high quality image always, right? Uh, you may need a small, uh, 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 lower quality image. So in that case, you can save the uh, bandwidth because more heavy image, more time it takes to download and it blocks your content pool paint. So image has to be as light as possible. Uh, 
not just that we can also use so uh, we can also use for example uh, the uh, format which is webp for example i want webp image which is again faster the same high quality image but instead of 458 kb it was 306 kb at this time so you can also use uh, different formats to make it faster I'm using Contentful, which does all this uh, image manipulations uh, on the uh, CDN network itself. But there are others which offer this opportunity. If not, you can upload multiple versions of your image. And by query parameter, you can serve different images. Or by file name, by different file name, you can serve different images. Cool. If you're able to follow me so far, I'll, I'll go on. And we'll also talk about another aspect. On this page, there are a lot of images. Do I need all those images up front? Maybe not. Right? Can I do something about it? Uh, I was talking to Srini about improving the website. And one other question is, why are we spending time and wasting bandwidth on the images which you may, which user may never see? Right? This is like quite at below on my web page. What if they don't even see it? Right? Another aspect here. We have spoken spoken about the sizes. What if I say anyway? If you look at on my website, I'm showing it like a thumbnail, a small image. Right? Can I say I want to show it on width? of 150 pixel look at this so if i render it now it is going to take only 3.5 kb if i load the original image as it is it's going to take 598 kb so huge um, huge data i am able to save and also it's going to be faster because if you see the time it took it took uh, i think uh, around like 500 millisecond total uh, total 585 milliseconds but if you look at the larger image for that matter it was three seconds imagine the time you're able to save and you're able to draw something on your contentful like you're able to do your first as well as largest contentful uh, uh, contentful paint as fast as possible cool uh, we can again look at the another aspect i was i touched base on it and uh, uh, and that one is do i need all those images why don't i wait for those images also, another thing maybe Srini might have noticed yeah, that's another topic he likes. Yeah, probably I, I could see that the uh, web page flickers, right? For a fraction of a second, there is a layout shift and the image actually uh, uh, lands in there. So uh, probably I think we should give a, uh, yeah, it's quite evident. Uh, we saw that the image doesn't load and then the content from the bottom came up and then after the image load, the content came down as well, right? Probably to address this cumulative layout shift, we can give an appropriate width and height to be reserved to be, I mean, we are just telling the browser that uh, reserve this width and height for your, uh, uh, some other component so that uh, it gets rendered. So the co content that gets loaded behind the scenes on the bottom can stay there as is, so we don't see any flickering there, right? Probably yeah. we can go back to our code and then uh, uh, fix the height and width of it. Yeah, let's try. So as we know, it's like uh, 1200 into 675. So maybe we can uh, try adding it. Yeah. So the hero image we are adding in the uh, app here, right? So I can simply go and say uh, in the, I'm using the uh, style. So here, so I can say width was uh, 1200 pixel and the height was 675 pixel. Right, that is one thing. So we are fixing the size, and if you do that, I think the flickering should not appear. But as we are here on the code already, you can see another thing. We are eagerly loading. This is a hero image, so I want to load it as fast as I can, right? And we also spoke about, uh, I think, probably we can load the images which are not in our viewport as lazy, so that it will help us to load our website faster. I mean, it gives more priority to. Uh, um, hero image rather than uh, giving the same priority to uh, the images that are not as part of our report. So yeah. we can also defer that. So uh, another way along with laziness is we can defer it so that uh, the website that gets loaded first will have this priority which is very high and uh, remaining web pages, I mean, remaining web, uh, web images can be uh, deferred to a little later. Yeah, yeah. So I think those, those four dog images, I'm going to lazily yeah. load because they're at the bottom. Also, we are showing the GitHub contributors. I'm going to load their images lazily. Let's see how what, what it changes and how it changes. At the same time, we spoke about uh, the sizes. So as we know that 
the the dog images are like 100 by 100 so why don't i why can't i even say that i only want the smaller images yeah right? that makes sense so maybe i'll just copy the same stuff and we'll put it in front of every image so uh, to summarize what we are doing here is basically we are uh, reducing the width and height of uh, the images that are not in our viewport and we are deferring those images to lazy load which are not in our viewport so that the hero image we have takes more priority and probably we can preload that image which is uh, an hero image as well so uh, preloading in the sense is basically uh, we are instructing our website to load this particular asset as early as possible. So which uh, which basically preloads this asset from CDN uh, as fast as possible because that's a preloaded image. We can use the same preload image when we are referring that in our image tag. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see if this has changed something on our website now. Wonderful. Cool. Okay, we are here and I'm going to look at the images. Let me re-render it. Okay, so as we can see, I think uh, maybe if I try to scroll, if you scroll, the images are getting downloaded as we scroll. Those are loads. So if you don't scroll, you don't really try to load them faster, right? More you are saving on the internet, you are not sharing the bandwidth, it's going to be faster. So this is by default supported by the browsers and they're downloading the images when they will need it, right? At the same time, the dog images I had at the bottom, they are like super small now, 4KB, 3KB, 4KB, instead of the full size images we had. So it's definitely an improvement compared to what we had earlier. Perfect. Also, we are also preloading an image, uh, hero image, right? Yes, so if you look at this one, I think this is the first thing which gets loaded and we queued it. So when I opened the page, just 17 millisecond after this request was queued so you give it higher priority if you want to see the difference we can even see the difference if we go back here and I'll comment out this preloading section and uh, then i try to reload my website Let's see uh, where is my hero image sorry it's gonna load the the twitter widget is gonna load something over here but if i do it now you can see this is my hero image. It was prioritized or queued at 168th millisecond. Before that, we tried to download Favicon and the uh, SVG for the logo, right? But if I add this one, we the browser is, we are instructing browser that this is the image I want to show as soon as possible. So can you please prioritize it? So now it is the first one. As you can see, it's even before Favicon I, ICO and uh, the time is i don't know last time it was 17 millisecond it may be a lot faster uh, it will be it may be something around the same time or a bit faster this time yeah i'm not able to show it somehow 12 milliseconds yeah cool so this is about the images folks uh, apart from that i think as yeah, so you was saying we can do lazy loading we can also defer them so that uh, you can say you want to download or decode this image you do it on the different or different process, not on the main process. Also, adding to that, Ashi was also talking about uh, modern web extensions, right? Uh, WebP, which uh, offers a similar uh, kind of quality, but the size is very less. So, which in turn gives us very less uh, data transferred on wire. So, it uh, loads our websites much faster, right? So, we loaded progressively, which means we don't show the white. Uh, blank out screen and then uh, we show a poor quality image and then as we progress it loads a better quality and then we can use modern web extensions on the CDN. Uh, we have shown here with the help of Contentful but uh, there are a lot of CDNs that could that offers amazing capabilities right. We can make use of that right and also we have something called uh, picture tag in uh, JavaScript which will help you to give different uh, source sets so on different, uh, it will help you to render different sources from, I mean, different width and height for different uh, uh, different uh, landscapes, probably. For example, for web, it is different. For tablet resolution, it's different. For web, res I mean, for mobile resolution, it's different. And then last but not least, we have something called fetch priority. As like we were preloading, we can also instruct the browser to fetch this on priority, which is an experimental flag, not supported except Chrome. 
and quite recently been introduced, which will also help your browser to know that this is an asset that I need to preload as early as possible. So we talked a lot about images. We optimized it for content, uh, I mean, cumulative layout shifts as well, right? Next that attributes, uh, next, uh, next thing about, next thing is about fonts, right? So fonts kind of uh, uh, plays a vital role on your website. And uh, it is advisable to not use so many number of fonts stylings. So it's better to stick to three or four in the max so that you will have a better experience in terms of user. So there are a lot of ways you could optimize it so that we don't experience that flash of unstyled text. The moment you load it, it loads something in a default manner and then applies the style. Here we are using, I mean, I think we are using Inter, which is a font family. Uh, it loads something else in between and then probably users enter and then I, I mean that's the flash of unstyled text in uh, JS world I mean in web world we say that as fault flash of unstyled text right so this needs to be definitely optimized uh, because you have to provide a better user experience when it comes to font so a uh, lot of so you could see that there is a difference. It has, uh, it, it was a different font styling initially, and you can also give default font styling uh, till the original one loads, right? You know, that's another way you could improve it, right? So we, uh, as like how we preloaded an image, we can preload a font style as well. Let's say we are using fonts.googleapi, uh, google.com. So most of the times people tend to use fonts.google.com to use their own fonts. So that we can uh, we can also tell or uh, instruct the browser to preload this specific font uh, and pre-connect to it because it's downloading from an external domain. We can pre-connect. So pre-connect is another wonderful tag in link tag where you can specify and say this is an asset that I wanted to pre-connect, which means you are instructing the browser to resolve the DNS of fonts go google.com api.com in a much faster way. I mean. You, it gives more priority basically. So pre-connect and then you can give preload as well at times so that it will, and let's say you are loading font from your local. You could use pre uh, preload so that it gets loaded on priority, right? So uh, on line number 11, you see that uh, we are using fonts.google.com and then family is inter and the, at the end, you see something called display equal to swap. So display equal to swap is nothing but Google kind of uh, understands that if the family font inter not available on time, you see there are a lot of font faces getting downloaded for that specific font. It displays something on a swap. I mean, it gives you something else that is more and more relevant, right? So it gives you, I mean, it helps Google to take faster decisions. Another wonderful thing about uh, fonts.google.com is about you could also append it with something called ampersand text and say, let's say, can, can we say ampersand text equal to Agile India? You could say, hello world, Srini, Ash, uh, for now, let's say Agile India. So instead of downloading the entire font faces, it gives you, uh, I mean, it, it, it kind of instructs the uh, server uh, that I'm going to use this font for text. So give me something much faster and which is very less font stylings, right? So it will help you to download the image. I mean, download the fonts in uh, because the font phase is very less. So it is much faster and it gives you something quite uh, quite relevant and quite near to the, I mean, it's part of Inter, but it is not the actual regular uh, Inter that you are using, right? So yeah, uh, only, only the characters we put in Agile India were received and you can see only those things are styled. Others are still the fallback font. Exactly. Right, so uh, it helps us to load things faster. Uh, if I, if I, let's say I, uh, I have to use uh, only for logo, I'm going to use that. So you could add a text there, so it will help you to style your logo alone. So you don't have to load all the font faces on time, right? So the uh, next thing is about. Uh, so we talked about preload, pre-connect, self-hosting versus Google self-hosting. Probably you could use preload. Google fonts, you could play around with the displaying the swap and then text attributes, right? These are much faster ones to help you to uh, load everything on time so that the FOUT time is very, very minimal. So you don't experience that very often, right? So that's about font optimization. So to give you a better uh, experience, the next thing that we are going to talk about is, uh, which Ash remembered at the front, 
whether uh, uh, it's my browser that gets freezed or it's my mobile or it's exactly uh, the website that is inducing that, right? So render blocking resources. Apart from images and fonts that we have optimized so far, we have huge style sheets, right? So style sheets plays a crucial role to block the main thread, the UI thread, which Ashe was talking about on front. And then JavaScript, uh, web pages nowadays are full of JavaScript. So JavaScript plays a crucial role in uh, blocking the thread as well. And we have an external library even in our website, which is a Twitter widget, which Ashe was talking about. And uh, also we have uh, Google Analytics integration, right? So a uh, lot of times these analytics uh, integrations to it takes a uh, gives us a huge pain, right? So we could optimize those analytics to not run on main thread. So to reduce, we can also reduce the style sheet. We can differ, which is not in our view. Let's say uh, as share certain images on the bottom. If you want to differ those style sheets, we can differ those. And also, uh, basically. Uh, we can also uh, figure out from coverage, as Sasha was showing here, uh, what are the highest number of, uh, uh, I mean, you could eliminate those unused JavaScript, unused uh, CSS, so that it, uh, I mean, the DOM size reduces and also uh, helps us to uh, uh, eliminate these render blocking resources. I, I, I remember Asha was playing around with respect to analytics. So Asha, you have yeah, something yeah. around that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think uh, just to pick here, so it is loading the JavaScript and it is telling me out of this JavaScript I'm downloading from this location, I am using uh, the 41% of it is unused, right? So this way, maybe you can look at your bundles and figure out, am I using all of it? If not, we'll have to see what can be reduced. Uh, that's going to definitely help us in reducing the time spent evaluating the JavaScript on the browser and focus more on drawing something and making it interactive as soon as possible. Right. And the topic uh, Srini was talking about uh, is there is another library. So Builder IO is another content management system. It's a visual CMS. And they came up with another library called as Party Town. Uh, this Party Town library can actually take responsibility of loading your third party libraries, just like Google Analytics. And it can load it on the uh, worker thread. So your main thread is not blocked. And if you're wondering what it takes to implement, is it easy? It is difficult. It's super easy. For React, it's just four-step process. You add the build party town dependency. You add party town tag in your page. And then you, whatever your script is, maybe it's Google Tag Manager. I'm already adding it. Maybe already present in your page. You change the type of it. Text party town. And the fourth step is you need to copy certain party town libraries to your public folder on React.js. Four steps, took a couple of, it took a couple of minutes and that's it, voila, it works. Uh, and it is not loading, it, it stops uh, uh, loading the Google Tag Manager on your main thread and offloads it to a worker thread, which uh, reduces the blocking time for you. This is wonderful, right? Uh, uh, the, uh, most of the times I remember uh, mm -hmm. saying that it's analytics who is blocking the rendering. Uh, not the actual image. Uh, we, we we tend to optimize fonts, website, I mean, web, uh, other resources like uh, cleaning up unused JavaScript, cleaning up unused uh, CSS, but still the LCP is, I mean, the TBT is kind of very huge. It's been, most of the times it's because of these third party libraries. Like, for example, we are using GTM and we are using uh, Twitter widgets, which not necessarily has to be loaded up front probably uh, it's blocking all of our resources. So probably it's better to offload the responsibilities from um, uh, main thread and give it to a web worker, as you were saying, right? So that's wonderful. It gives us a huge pain relief in terms of uh, uh, handling these kind of third party scripts, which we don't have much control as well, right? So uh, that's wonderful. And, yeah, uh, I, think, I think just a, just a call out, not one side fits all. Uh, it has to be used with caution. You should test uh, if it is working. I think Party Town as a web on, on the website, they have given a lot of uh, resources on when to use it, when not to use it. But yeah, this is something you can definitely try out. Awesome, awesome. So next crucial thing that we I remember we were fixing it about uh, giving a dimension to image so that uh, the hero image has appropriate width and height. Right, we, I remember we were giving some 1,200 pixel and 675 pixel, which helps us to uh, instruct the browser that, okay, I have an image here, which is going to be rendered and don't use the content uh, so that uh, the text contents behind the scenes, I mean, below the uh, below this image will get loaded as in when it 
uh, uh, as and when uh, we have the content ready, right? So that's another thing. And uh, uh, on the first uh, uh, demo that we, I mean, on the GIF that we remember seeing that uh, instead of uh, uh, not submitting, and, and I ended up submitting all the orders, so uh, order got reserved. Most of the times it's mostly due to this ad spots, right? So uh, it's better to reserve an ad spot with appropriate component width and height so that a browser is completely aware that this component is going to be rendered and which has a fixed width and height. In the modern world, probably you can also use aspect ratios rather than 1200 pixel and uh, 700 pixels. So we can compute the aspect ratio and use it, which is much efficient way to say that, okay, to a browser on different aspect ratios uh, so that it is uh, able to load contents on the fly, able to understand which kind of uh, form factor that we are in, probably it's a tablet or a mobile or it's a web. So uh, it can work for different resolutions, right? So these are amazing things that helps us to solve this leadership. And now most of the modern websites have animations. They wanted to look better. So they do have, they do use a lot of animation libraries, right? So the preferred animation is transform rather than another way. So transform kind of helps us to uh, uh, reduce all these layout shift, but in a normal way, if you use another uh, anything else apart from transformation that induces this kind of uh, uh, layout shifts basically. So here we have a simple example, which helps us to show transformation. Yeah, so, so I have, have a, yeah, I have recorded the performance. LS means layout shift. As you can see, this animation is using something called as uh, top, top left property to animate basically. Sorry, I think the code is still loading. But yeah, when you do that, it's treating it as a layout shift. But the same animation done on the uh, done using the transform uh, directives of CSS animation. And if I look at the performance, record it, same animation, no change at all. And I look at the long uh, log here on the performance, there is no layout shift. So transform animations are not treated as layout shift. Whereas your another the, the top left uh, i'm changing the top left attributes for animation and it is treated, treated as layout shift amazing yeah. also it takes yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, it also takes uh, resources on your main thread by the way when you say it's a layout shift yeah i was about to say that so it also offloads that uh, uh, res huge responsibility or long running task mm -hmm. in the ui thread or the main thread right so we talked about uh, image font we talked about layout shifts now, we talked about render blocking resource, and the next thing comes up to mind is caching. Yeah, I think it's the most crucial uh, part of uh, where you host your website. Uh, so if you look at the virtual website we are looking at, so what is caching basically? You want to cache because if something is not changing, if user has already downloaded, why would you, why you ask them to download? This is for the repeat visitors to your website. It's about optimizing the second visit to your website. If they already have it, why do you ask them to download? So you have to minimize that. Also, you can use CDN so that you can keep your website near to users because on the wire, it takes time for data to flow. Near your to your user, faster time, faster they can download your data, right? So CDN, you can use global, use global CDN so that you can, so global cloud, uh, glo global user base from global locations, right? So CDN is important, but then from a cache perspective, what should you do? It, it differs on use case by use case basis. On this website, if I look at my document, which is uh, gonna uh, change maybe frequently, what I'm telling is this is cached on a public CDN. Don't cache it on your local machine. And every time you should revalidate. I'm saying must revalidate. I'm not saying you download it every time, but I'm saying revalidate. So when I reload this page now, I have to uncheck this disable cache and maybe try it once again. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I think maybe I've broken something in the settings I have done here. Yeah, you can see my page is doing 304. I'm using e tag. So when I downloaded the website first time, it gave me a value. And using that value, I sent that value in my next request saying, this is the e tag I have, has it changed? And they will tell you, no, it hasn't changed. So this way you can use your caching mechanism to decide if something has to change or not has to change. Also, there are some JavaScript which you know will not change that much. So you can say it's gonna be valid forever and it's immutable means it will never change. But when the file changes, you will change the uh, commit ID and that way they'll be able, they'll be forced to download a new version. So I think that is something you can do and play with the caching. 
so I think that's where we probably would stop in the interest of time. And we'll, we are up for the question and answers. You have any. Thank you, folks. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, we, we have one question, uh, Ashay uh, and uh, Srinivasan. Uh, this, this question is from Venkat Raman. Uh, presuming we are using Akamai kind of CDNs, we can use their image management utility to optimize these further? Yes, absolutely. Uh, in my experience, that is possible. As I said, look, if your CDN allows you to use query params and do that, you can do that. If not, you can have multiple versions of your images. Using the utility, you can create multiple versions of your images and serve them based on uh, the device the image is being rendered on. So instead of using a, a, a image tag, probably you can use picture tag, which takes a lot of source sets. And each source set may point to uh, different resolutions and which will have a different sources. And we also have a, a default image where we, I mean, we can give a default image to it as well. So that will help you to uh, load these images as well faster. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us. Mm -hmm.